on today's football finance news. Everton takeover back on track. Manchester United supportive of rivals Premier League fight. And women's Super League revenues soar follow Linus's Euro success. All this and more in today's football finance news. So therefore, let's get on with it. We start with this week's top story. American billionaire Dan Friedkin has signed an exclusivity agreement to purchase Everton Football Club. The owner of AS Roma is now in pole position to take over one of England's most historic clubs. Friedkin, with an estimated net worth of over $6 billion, looks set to commence proceedings to acquire Farhad Mashiri's 94.1% stake in the club. This move could signal a new era for the Toffees after months of uncertainty. But how did we get here? Let's rewind and look at the backstory. Everton's recent history has been turbulent, to say the least. Excessive financial losses resulted in total deductions of eight points this season following two separate breaches of Premier League profit and sustainability rules. But despite these setbacks, Sean Dyche guided Everton away from the relegation zone, finishing 15, 14 points above the drop zone. Add to that persistent reports of cash flow problems and the construction of a new 52,000-seater stadium at Bramley Moor Dock, and you have a perfect storm of on-field struggles and boardroom chaos. Owner Fahad Mashiri first invested in 2016 and was billed as the perfect partner to take the club forward. Performances on and off the pitch have not paid dividends. On the field, Everton have fallen steadily from top half of the table to repeated relegation battles. And in our deep dive into Everton's financial story, out this Tuesday, Fashiri has overseen the net cash spend of over 500 million in operations and transfer fees, as well as 460 million to largely fund the new stadium build. This has led to Mashiri looking for a new buyer since the beginning of 2023. In September, Mashiri issued a statement saying, The nature of ownership and financing of top football clubs has changed immeasurably since I first invested in Everton over seven years ago. The days of an owner slash benefactor are seemingly out of reach for most, and the biggest clubs are now typically owned by well-resourced private equity firms, specialist sports investors, or state-backed companies and funds. This statement preceded a previous takeover agreement with controversial US firm 777 Partners. Despite entering into exclusive discussions, that sale collapsed in May of this year. Since then, several interested parties emerged, including major Everton debt holders, MSP Sports Capital, and local businessman Andy Bell and George Downing. On top of that, UK-based investment firm Vici Private Finance, even an international consortium including a Saudi royal lodged their interest. However, the Friedkin Group has stolen a march on the competition. Guy Sports reported that Friedkin has shown early commitment and intent by agreeing to pay off the loan made by MSP Sports Capital to Everton last year, plus around $40 million to assist with working capital and stadium funding. On Friday, Everton confirmed the exclusivity agreement, stating the club could confirm today that a period of exclusivity has been granted to the Friedkin Group to progress discussions to acquire a majority shareholding in Everton. This is not the first football play for the Friedkin Group, one of the largest US Toyota distributors who are also involved in the movie business, having first bought AS Roma in 2020 and then French side Cannes in 2023. However, there are still plenty of hurdles to overcome before this saga concludes. Whilst gaining Premier League approval may be a formality, the Friedkin Group's due diligence process could uncover some potential issues. The ESC, who writes extensively on Everton, noted this week, there are potential issues, not in the public domain, and which are the subject of much legal debate that still faces any prospective buyer. Those potential issues relate to the current ownership, the precise details of the shareholder loans, and potentially the most recent 777 loans, now controlled by ACAP. Regarding loans, Everton's net debt as of June 2023 stood at $331 million. But The Telegraph reported the total debt could now be beyond $1 billion. This includes $159 million to MSP Sports Capital, 225 million to rights and media funding, 190 million to 777 partners, and 450 million to Mashiri himself. Whilst they have agreed to settle the MSP loan as part of the exclusivity agreement, the Friedkin Group will need a plan for each of these remaining major creditors. Another wrinkle may be the upcoming financial year end on the 30th of June. Having been penalised multiple times, Everton have less than two weeks to ensure they have restricted losses sufficiently to avoid another PSR breach. This raises questions about the potential sale of promising young talent by Jared Branthwaite, who has attracted interest in recent times. Will takeover talks impact the decision to sell or not sell before the financial year end? 
So will Dan Friedkin be the one to steer Everton into calmer waters? Only time will tell. Let's see what happens with that, but we can't guarantee that, of course. Next up, Manchester City, the reigning Premier League champions, are in the midst of a legal battle with the Premier League over financial regulations. The club is challenging the league's associated party transaction rules, which ensure that commercial deals linked to a club's owners are conducted at fair market value. City claims these rules are restricted and contravene competition law, and arbitration between City and the league began on the 10th of June. But may City have an unlikely supporter in the red half of Manchester? In an interview with Bloomberg released this week, Manchester United minority owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe said he understands why City is pushing back against these financial rules. He emphasised the importance of maintaining a free market within the league and cautioned against overregulation, which he believes could lead to endless legal wrangling and damage the Premier League's reputation. Quote, you can understand why they would say that they want an open market, a free market. The Premier League is probably the most successful sporting league in the world, certainly the most successful football league in the world. And we have this expression in Northern England, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you start interfering too much, bringing too much regulation in, then you finish up with the Manchester City issue, you finish up with the Everton issue, you finish up with the Nottingham Forest issue, on and on and on. Ratcliffe's comments come at a time when the Premier League is facing increased scrutiny over its financial rules. Just last season, Everton and Nottingham Forest were penalised for breaching the league's profit and sustainability rules. Meanwhile, City themselves are preparing for the long-awaited hearing in November over 115 charges of alleged rule-breaking related to financial fair play. And City aren't the only team with gripes against the Premier League's financial regulations. Earlier this month, Aston Villa owner Nasef Sawiris, speaking to the Financial Times, referred to PSR rules as anti-competitive and alluded to taking advice over potential legal action. Some of the rules have actually resulted in cementing the status quo more than creating upward mobility and fluidity in the sport. The rules do not make sense and are not good for football. Managing a sports team has become more like being a treasurer or a bean counter rather than looking at what your team needs. It's more about creating paper profits, not real profits. It becomes a financial game, not a sporting game. With the result of the Premier League in Man City's two-week arbitration imminent, how big could the shockwaves be for the Premier League and its members? Now for a roundup of the other football finance news happening this week. Deloitte's annual review of football finance has shown women's Super League clubs generated 48 million in revenues in the 22-23 season, a 50% increase on the year before. Commercial revenues remained a driver of growth, representing 35% of total revenue, and average attendances in the first season since the Lionesses' success at Euro 22 almost doubled to over 5,500. Deloitte does not anticipate the growth of the women's game to be stopping anytime soon forecasting 68 million revenue by the 24-25 season. In commercial news, the Premier League recently announced a new beer partnership with Guinness, signing a four-year deal to replace Budweiser, who chose not to renew their deal with the English Top Flight League. The reported value of the deal is 52 million, representing a significant uptick from the previous deal. Finally, news from further down the league, League One side Bristol Rovers received a 750,000 grant from the Premier League to part fund their new South Stand at the Memorial Ground. The Bristol Post reported that Rovers took advantage of the Premier League Stadium Fund, which awards grants to lower league clubs to support stadium facilities development. Clubs are eligible for up to a quarter of a million if they are a member of the Football League and own a freehold site or a leasehold of at least 10 years. The Stadium Fund also provides grants to the National League System and Women's Football Pyramid and state that they've invested over 193 million across more than a thousand clubs since 2000. Well, that wraps up this week's football finance news. See you next time.